Hi, everyone. So before I joined Klarna, I worked in Belgium for a bank. It was a bank that had a lot of different kind of customers. They had regular customers like you and me. They had small business owners. They also had large corporate clients. And like any company, we had to figure out what we wanted to do. So we had to build a roadmap. And what would happen is that we would ask everyone in the company to come with ideas and to demonstrate the business value of these ideas and the value for the customers. And after we gathered all these ideas, we would put together a bunch of smart people in a room, and they would decide which initiatives we would do for the next six months. Now, these smart people, they were actually stakeholders from all parts of the business. So you had people who were really responsible for the banking products, like the cards, or the loans, or even like the funds, those kinds of things. And you also had people from marketing and more the customer side. Now, at the end of this road, roadmap um, session, which we did at an offsite, we would see that the people who were responsible for the business customers, they were really disappointed with the outcome, with the roadmap that has been chosen. And I think they had really good reasons for being disappointed. Because what we saw is that even though the corporates and the business customers were equally as important as the regular consumers, we would see that their ideas wouldn't get prioritized. And that was really frustrating for those stakeholders. So the question then is, why does this happen? And what I believe is the reason why this happened is because everyone who was at this offsite, they were all regular consumers. So they were all users of the mobile banking for consumers for the bank. So it's, it's really easy for them to identify with ideas to optimize the user experience there. But if they would look at an idea that was really far from what they knew, for example, to do something for corporate banks, for corporate banking clients, they would be, it would be difficult for them to identify themselves with those ideas. So in the end, we would end up with a roadmap that was really biased towards ideas for consumers. And that really has a business impact, because you make decisions that are kind of different than what you want to do. So why should this matter to you? So maybe this is just this Belgian bank that, that does these kinds of things, but maybe this also happens at Klarna. So the reason why I think it matters to you is I think it's very important to be conscious when this happens, when we are in these kinds of situations where we tend to trick ourselves, where we think that we're taking rational decisions, but actually we're not being as rational as we believe we are. And I think even though the examples that I have are mainly in product management, I think most of you will also recognize it from different contexts when you take a decision when it comes to engineering, for example. So this is pretty much the content of my presentation today. So I will help you understand why this happens. So why do we end up taking decisions that are not really as rational as we think? That's the first part. And the second part is I want to just give you some examples of biases that affect us. So to understand this, I think a really good way is to look at it from the point of view that Daniel Kahneman has. I think there will probably be some people in the audience who've read this book. Who has read the book? Yeah, well, quite a lot of people. So Daniel Kahneman, for the people who have not heard about him, he is a Nobel Prize winning psychologist and economist. And he's done decades of research when it comes to how our biases affect our decision making. And it's a really good book if you would like to know more after this presentation. So the way of, that Daniel Kahneman describes these things is there's fast and slow thinking. There's kind of two kinds of thinking. The first kind of thinking is when you ride a bicycle. So when you're riding a bicycle, it kind of goes automatic. You're not thinking like, now I have to use my right leg, then I have to use my left leg. And you have to shift your weight and those kinds of things. It just happens. So this is what Kahneman calls system one. So it just happens. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You don't have to think about it. You can do several things at the same time. Then there's system two. 
Jamie, do you know the answer to this? Okay. That's what Jamie got for trying to uh, annoy me a bit before I was doing the presentation. <laughs> so you can immediately see that this is different from riding a bicycle. So this is what Kahneman calls system two. So while system one doesn't take a lot of effort and it goes really automatic, when I ask you to um, do this multiplication, you have to really think, you have to focus. It takes all your energy. It's quite slow. And these are basically the two kinds of thinking. And what's important to know about these things is that while you have these two different systems, they tend to interfere with each other. So when I go back to the example of my previous job, when I saw that these roadmaps, the decisions weren't being taken as rational, this is actually what happens. People, they are looking at data, but they are letting their, their biases influence their decisions. One other thing about this is also it's far easier to see it in other people. When it happens to people among you, then it's, it's easier to recognize it in yourself. I think the word has uh, been used a lot today, but I just wanted to get a definition out there. So a cognitive bias is a systematic pattern of deviation from norm or rationality in judgment. Individuals create their own subjective social reality from their perception of the input. So you kind of make your own reality, and that influences your decisions. So that was a bit to help you understand how this happens, the two kind of thinking that interfere with each other. And I will go through some examples, common things that happen when it comes to these biases. So the first one, a bit applied to product is that sometimes we're biased to prioritize things that we have memories of, and they call this availability bias. Imagine you're a doctor, and it's flu season, and you see like 20 patients a day, and they all come in with the same symptoms. So people are coughing, they're maybe complaining about some pain in their, in their neck, in their lungs. So, it's quite easy to treat these people, right? Because they all have the same symptoms, and it's flu season. But what happens if on the same day, someone comes in with a more serious issue? If someone comes in, and they have some kind of serious condition with their lungs. They also cough, and they also have some pain in their lungs. It's kind of difficult in that situation as a doctor to see that this is a different case. Our mind tends to trick ourselves, and it's really easy for doctors to misdiagnose people in those situations. There's actually a lot of research into this. And this actually also happens closer to what we do. Over the past year, as uh, mentioned in the introduction, I've been a PM of uh, CRED, and we all know CRED as a, as a really big system, and there's a lot of things you could improve in CRED. And I saw that sometimes it's tempting to prioritize things that customer service asks us about. So even if there's just one case, customer service asks us a question because they don't really know how to explain it to the customer, it's kind of tempting to really dive into that problem and solve it and try to fix that bug. But actually, we should think about we have all these other issues. We should really look at which things we should fix, which ones should have the, the most business value and customer value when we fix them. So this is an example of the availability bias. These are things that we know examples of, and this really influences us. So that was the first bias. The second bias, I think, is quite familiar to a lot of people. It's confirmation bias, or bias for information that supports your view. Warren Buffett has said that people are best at interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. And it's not really a coincidence that this is someone from investment sector who says this, because it happens a lot in investment decisions that your bias influences yourself. One interesting example for me was last year with Tesla. Tesla was in the news with these kind of pictures. So this is like an abandoned factory. And Tesla basically had a lot of these sites across California where they would put their cars. And the reason for it was that uh, Tesla said they were producing so many cars 
but they weren't doing that well in delivery, so they had to have some, some spaces to put them. Now, Tesla has a lot of people who really believe in it, they're really passionate about it, and they also invest in it. And you also have the people who try to make a profit from not believing in Tesla. These are the shorters. There are people who are betting against Tesla. And the interesting thing about this is when these articles came out, based on the same information, the people who believed in Tesla, they would say, oh, Tesla is so good at producing cars, they cannot deliver them to customers fast enough. And the people who had a different view, the ones who believed that Tesla it was kind of a hoax, they would say that, well, Tesla says they're so successful, they sell so many cars, but yet they have so many in stock. So this is a really good example of confirmation bias. Based on the same information, different people, they will have different biases, so they will draw different conclusions. Another common example of this is what we call information bubbles. So this is a concept that got fairly popular when uh, Trump won the elections. So social media, they actually play a really big role in abusing our confirmation bias because it's not just about seeking out information that supports your view. It's also about algorithms presenting you what you already agree with. So if you're on Facebook, for example, they will show you things that really match your view. You will not see that many information that contradicts your view. Again, in uh, product management, something I've seen quite regularly is quite similar to what happened with uh, the Tesla news. I've seen several times that when you do customer research, you usually get a very nice report, which is fairly objective. Often there's a, an external party involved. They do a write-up with the conclusions. And if you, if you discuss this report with different people in your organization, you will see that they interpret things differently. And often you see that all of them, they kind of use the information from this report to support the views they already had. And that's also a good example of confirmation bias. And you can see that these kinds of biases really affect your decisions. Because if you have data, but you just use it to support your existing views, then maybe you're not taking the right decisions. So then there's the third bias, and the last one I will have some examples of. So this is the bias because you like someone or something, or they call it also the liking bias. One example of this is salespeople. Salespeople know that it's really important that their customers, they like them, and they kind of build a relationship with them. And that's no coincidence because if you're a salesman and your customer dislikes you, it's quite unlikely that you will sell. And this also happens at product management. So I've taken some screenshots of the, the Google Play Store. It's not the company I used to work for, but it's their competitor. But basically what you see is they have pages after pages of apps in the App Store. And I also, had, I also saw this at, at my previous company. And what actually happened is that there's a lot of people who have an idea that is very important to them. So imagine, for example, that you're responsible for events at the bank. They have really big marketing departments. They will do these events for their customers. And you have this idea, and it really sounds interesting to you. So what if you could have an app for these events so that your customers could use this app to check on the events that the banks organize? So it must sound very strange, but I've been on the other side. And there's a lot of these ideas that exist within banks or other companies probably that you're really passionate about this app. And then you end up with an app store where you have an app specifically for young people. So you have an app for young people for banking. And when you look at the app, it's, it's really identical to the normal banking app, but it has some more colors. Or you even have a, an app sometimes specifically for customers at the bank who are in the medical field or dentist, because wouldn't it be nice if we would have a magazine for these people? And a lot of these things happen because People, they really like what they work on. If you're responsible for funds at the bank, of course it's a really cool idea to have an app for funds, isn't it? So this is also an example, and you can really see the bottom line. Wouldn't it be better if this company would have maybe five apps, max, 
and then their, their uh, resources will be spent much more wisely. So these were my examples. So when you leave this room, there are basically three takeaways that I would like you to remember. Remember the two ways of thinking. There's these two systems. The first one comes automatic, and it's really useful because if we as humans had to put a lot of effort in every small decision we take, we wouldn't survive. The second one takes a lot of effort. But remember, the first system really interferes with the second one. The second takeaway is we often act less rational than we believe. Keep this in mind when you're taking decisions. And try to recognize these situations. And then to finish with a quote from Kahneman, the one who wrote the book, the best we can do is a compromise. Learn to recognize situations in which mistakes are likely and try harder to avoid significant mistakes when the stakes are high. Thank you.